All right, so this is the entrance to my office here. I have a bulletin board there, and this is the word of the year. Every year, I have a word of the year, and I've done that for many years, and growth was the word for this year. And although I do agree in many ways I have been growing, um, I, I've never changed my word in the middle of the year, but I feel very strongly that I need to change it and in order to fixate my direction and my resolve in that um, direction. So what I'm going to do is change the word, which is growth. And this was for, this has been here from January of this year. And I'm going to put up a new word that I really feel is very important and I'm really learning a lot about how important that is. Hope I spell it right. And that is the word discipline. Hey everybody, good morning. It is Thursday morning. Wanted to check in with you real quick. Sorry if you hear my little dog barking outside. She's setting the world right because there are birds and cats and everything and I can't make her stop. So um Besides that, let's get started. I wanted to report to you last week, well, it was actually four days ago that I told you about it. Um, I was down 1.8 for last week, right? Which was really super. Today, I'm weighing twice a week now so that I can track my trends. Um, I am down another 1.2. So I am really happy about that. Uh, what it really boils down to is less calories and moving more. <laughs> so, but doing it in a gentle enough way that I can deal with it and being consistent. And consistency, I think, is the biggest hurdle that I am getting over on a daily and hourly meal basis in order to make this happen. And that's the missing element that was missing in the past. And um, the reason why is because life is what it is and there's always, you know, a new cake at potluck to be had and cake is like my weakness, right? Or um, there's another event to celebrate or there's something that, you know, oh, I'm, you know, I'd, I'd like to eat that I'm not going to get to eat for a long time, so I might as well have it now. There's always something, right? And there, there has to be something bigger than that that's going to help you stay on board, that's going to help you be disciplined enough to say, you know what, when I'm ready for it, I can have that anytime I want. But right now, I have to do this for me. Well, that's been a huge hurdle for me for such a long time. But lately, once in a while in my life, I can get over that. And lately, I've been able to stick with this. Okay, so what has really kind of helped with that hurdle? I will say, let me let me go back to a book that I, I have. It's by Dr. Joel Furman, and it's Eat to Be Healthy. And there's some things that he say in there, that he says in there that are like very poignant and they stick with me. And one thing that I read a while back that he said was, don't be afraid to be hungry and be able so that you're able to tell real hunger from a superficial hunger, right? And that kind of perplexed me a bit. And I didn't realize for the longest time that one of the hurdles I couldn't get over was the fact that I was actually afraid to be hungry. Um, now this might go back to childhood, you know, to some instance, you know, maybe went through a hard time, whatever. I don't really want to get into that. But for whatever reason it was, uh, you know, nobody wants to be hungry, but sometimes we have a little bit more of a fear of being hungry. So, you know, the, the minute a gentle hunger starts to come around, oh my goodness, I've got to eat. And I, not only do I have to eat, but I have to eat a full and complete meal. And now that I have that full meal on my plate, I find halfway that I'm satiated, but you know, I might be hungry if I don't eat the whole thing So before my next meal, so I better push it and eat the whole thing. Hence, then I end up overeating calories, which puts me over the deficit, and I don't lose, right? And then I go, I don't know why a lot didn't lose that week. I ate good food, and I was exercising a decent amount. Well, but I may have just had too many calories that put me over the deficit in order needed to lose weight, right? 
And so I thought, okay, I need to get over this hurdle of being afraid to be hungry. And so um, another thing that Dr. Furman said was, when you have real hunger, you're not only going to feel it in your stomach, you're going to feel it in your throat. And I thought, well, that is weird. I don't think I've ever felt hunger in my throat. Maybe I have, and I just haven't recognized it, right? So I said, I'm going to do this purposely and mindfully. I'm going to allow myself to get hungry, like really hungry, and see what that feels like. And so um, I can tell you that right now this morning, I do feel it because yesterday we had dinner about 6 o'clock. We like to talk and have a good time at dinner, and so we ended it about... 6.40 or so, 6.45, and then um, there was nothing after that, and this morning it's about 9.30 right now, and I am really hungry, and I've worked out already, so it got everything going, and so um, not only do I feel it in my stomach and my tummy's rumbling, um, you know, I felt a little weakish earlier, pushed past it during my workout, and now I feel a little bit of push right up in my throat right here. And it's just a feeling that says, you're really hungry. And so I'm going to enjoy my steel cut oats this morning with fruit, my flaxseed meal, my honey, my creamer. And it. it's going to be absolutely heavenly. And um, that's my real hunger. And one thing that he says about when you get real hunger is that um, when you do get real hungry and then you eat, it actually makes food taste better. It tastes better and it's much more satisfying. That Him saying that was one of the biggest motivations to me actually saying, let me try to be hungry because I want my food to taste better, especially if I'm cutting back on salt and sugar and junk and MSGs. I don't have anything there that's going to artificially make my food taste better and make me want more. So I want it to taste better. My greens are gonna taste better. The things that don't have a lot of salt on it are gonna taste better. Not a lot of sugar are gonna taste better, right? My huge bowl of oatmeal, just one teaspoon of, sh of honey really flavors it enough. And so I think that's a wonderful, you know, another wonderful benefit. Um, so, oh, this is another thing I wanted to pat, pass on in case it helps you in any way today. But that is, all right, after dinner last night, and I will, I will, I know that everybody goes through this. Um, after dinner, it was about an hour later, and the kids had already gone to bed. We were just about to go to bed, and I had kind of an itch. I wasn't hungry at all. I was just about to go to bed. I was tired, but I had an itch, an itchy feeling. I don't know how else to describe it, but something that made me go, why don't you just get a cup of hot chocolate? Why don't you just grab, you know, some peanut butter on a cracker or something like that? And it wasn't because I was hungry. It was an itch. It was just an itch. It was something that was maybe driven by behavior or some other motivation. But I realized because I know what real hunger feels like, I was able to tell the difference. And I'm like, that's not hunger. I don't know what it is. And maybe in the past I would have given in to that and maybe that would have sabotaged any semblance of weight loss within the next couple of days after that. But now I can recognize that and I said, no, that is an itch. I'm not going to give in to that. And um, so I am going to encourage you to not scratch the itch. Number one, I'm encouraging you to try to feel real hunger before your next meal and enjoy it and take note of what that feels like so that when you do, number two, get that itch, do not scratch that itch, right? What I ended up doing, I'll tell you what I ended up doing. I may have scratched it a little bit, but I mean, I didn't like scratch it, but I have a Werther's butterscotch sugar-free um, candy that you can just kind of like suck on. And I had one of those and it was fine went on to bed, right? And it's like, what, two calories or something. And um, I thought that was fine. So I don't know, I didn't really count that as really scratching the inch, but I thought that was more like using a little bit of, um, what's that stuff you put on your mosquito bites so that they don't itch, <laughs> Bactrosin or something like that. That was my medication to kind of like ward off the itch. But in any case, it worked and I was fine. 
and I'm down 1.2 this morning. So um, whatever I have to do to increase my strength in discipline, then that's great because uh, growth and what I really want, my getting to my goal is gonna be a byproduct of my discipline, uh, focus on discipline, moving to the forefront. And that's what I'm trying to do right now. So I wanted to pass those things on in case they would help anybody out there. And um, yeah, I want you to have a wonderful, wonderful Thursday. I love you guys a lot and I will see you soon. Hey guys, I just got back from Costco and I found these. Quaker Rice Crisps, and I'm going to be filling up our little basket where I used to put chips. Um, I haven't put them there for a long time, but I thought that my family would enjoy these, and I wrote down the number of points on the purple plan that it is, but they are rice snacks. Now, the caramel one is four points on purple, cheddar is three, ranch is two, and apple cinnamon is four. So I think my favorite would probably be the ranch, maybe the cheddar, um, if I was to have them. But anyway, I thought that these might be a good alternative to um, regular chips. And again, these are all pre-portioned out, so that's very helpful. All right, some of you may remember that the kids planted watermelons. And I wanted to show you how they're growing. Look how big they're getting already. One of the most helpful things for me to do for lunches is pre-make my salads. These are all washed and cut up, and there's no tomatoes in there or something that could make them soggy. But the main veggies, I put them in these really big jars and then just set a nice clean paper towel on top, and they'll stay I crispy. I want to open some Happy Mail. I have one of my good friends, Susan, Sparkly Susan out there. I love her to pieces. She's so supportive. She's probably one of the most supportive persons I have ever met online. And she just gives a lot of love to everybody that she meets out there. And I just love being her friend on YouTube, on Fitbit, on these other um, channels, and just wherever she's at on Facebook and everything. She's just really wonderful on Instagram. She's just a wonderful light and a wonderful soul. And if you have Sparkly Susan, and you are a, a, as one of your viewers, and you're a YouTuber, then you are blessed. <laughs> so anyway, uh, this is from Susan, and I wanted to open it and share it with you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Let's try this again. Oh, I will try these, Susan. Thank you. Look what she sent me, guys. I have been using, incidentally, I have been using a lot of water enhancers um, lately. I don't know if I actually shared that with her or if we're just on the same mental plane. I think we are. But she sent me some that I'm going to try and I'll share them with you. This one is Country Time Pink Lemonade, always my favorite. Orange Early Rise, I think that's going to be a favorite. <laughs> blue Raspberry, again, I have a lot of favorites. Love Blue Raspberry. And what kind is this? This is, um, it says S. I'll have to check out this one. Um, High C Mango or Mashin Mango Melon Drink Mix. That sounds really good. I think I'm gonna need to get some of these. Sun-kissed pineapple and grab and grape, which is also a high C. My mouth is watering. I can't wait to try these. Now to find out which one should I try first. It's a super hot day today. It's gonna to be 111. Not the hottest. I think tomorrow it'll be 114. Really super hot here. But I'm thinking, hmm. Should I mix orange and pineapple together? Because that sounds like that would be a good thing. Although I, I'm a purist and I like doing things by themselves too. Hmm. I don't know. Orange and pineapple sound delicious. I think I might try that this morning. And if it's really good, I'll save half for my husband. So he can try it too. My mouth is watering again. Susan, I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart, not just for these wonderful little treasures, but for being my friend and just for being the person that you are and for spreading the love. I love you so much and I'll see you later, guys.